In this episode, we are going to have a look at the Composer, which is the dependency manager for PHP. What does it mean? It installs dependencies uh, for your project. And by dependencies, I mean some packages that someone else might have written and made it freely available to everyone who wants to make use of them. So rather than writing something that's already available, you may spend time on writing something more unique uh, specifically for your system. Okay, we're going to click on the Getting Started button. And on the Getting Started, depending on what system you're on, you can check the installation, Linux, Unix, OS X, and installation for Windows. Let's click on Windows first. On Windows, you have this um, Setup Exe, so download this file, run it. It will install the latest Composer version and set up your path so that you just call Composer from any directory in your command line. And then you have to, the note here says that you have to close your terminal, uh, your current terminal, uh, test usage with, with the new terminal. This is important since the path only gets loaded when the terminal starts. So make sure that obviously if you have terminal open uh, before you start installing the, uh, the composer, then you close it and uh, open the new one to test it. Okay, if we scroll up for, uh, for the Linux, Unix, and OS X. What I'm going to do is go to the download page. They see the download page for instructions. And I'm going to scroll down rather than uh, actually installing this from within the terminal, downloading this through the terminal. I'm just going to click on the latest snapshot here, this 1.0.2.0. If I click on this one, this will download the composer.far to my uh, machine. And if I open it uh, in the terminal, actually, let's open the terminal window. So terminal and I'm going to navigate to my uh, downloads directory, which is going to be CD space, then tilde symbol, forward slash downloads. Now LS to list all of the files, and there we go, composers here. Uh, in order to run a composer, uh, composer.far, what we would have to do is do PHP composer, then for, uh, with the extension this far, which is PHP archive file, hit return, and that gives us the full list of options. But that's not quite how we want to do it. We want to install it globally. Let's go back to com getcomposer.org, by the way, the uh, URL for this website. If we go back, what we want to do is getting started again, and then we want to install it globally. If we click on this link, it tells us that in order to install it globally, we need to use the move command, uh, name of the file, which is composer.far, and move it to our user local bin composer. Uh, this way it's going to be automatically available to us from within the terminal when the terminal window opens and we will only have to type in composer to start to make it run basically. Uh, I've already done this so obviously if you haven't, if you are new to composer, once you've downloaded this file we're still within the downloads directory, directory if I do ls you'll see the composer still here. What you would have to do is do move composer.far and then the path to this user local bin and rename the file so that you don't have to type this dot far extension. That's why there's just composer at the end. So that's what you would have to do. Obviously, as I said earlier, I have composer already installed uh, globally on my machine, so I can only type composer and that will run all of the commands. It's going to give me the, the manual, actually list of all available options for, for the composer. Okay, so now what does this composer give us? We can actually close this composer browser window, go back to our editor, and what composer comes with uh, when it installs, uh, instantiates itself, for instance, or installs any packages, it, e it comes with the auto loader, which is a massively useful tool because it will not only load your own classes, and you can indicate which files, which directory, what namespace, and so on you'd like to have, but it also uh, generates the auto loader for, this is a single file, by the way, that you're going to have to include within your project. Uh, it will also autoload any dependencies, any packages that you may want to install with your project. So what I'm going to do from within my index.php, I'm going to remove this custom autoloader registration here that we did, and I'm going to leave it like this for the time being. Now within the root of my project, I'm going to create a new file and call it composer.json. It's a JSON uh, format of the file. So we need to put uh, the two uh, Kelly brackets here just to start with uh, and we leave it like this for the time being. So if we close the file, go back to the terminal. Now I need to navigate to this uh, course which is on my desktop. So I go to CD, tilt symbol, then desktop, 
and then PHP cars. So now if I do ls, you'll see all of these files that I have on the left hand side are listed within the terminal composite JSON, index.php and source. So now what I want to do is run composer install and this you'll see it tells me that there's nothing to install or update but what it did it generated the vendor directory and within this vendor directory apart from the composer directory it added this auto load now what i need to do is to require this file uh, from within my index.php so required and vendor forward slash auto load and now i've got the auto loader which will load everything I want. But before it will load anything, I need to tell it how I want my files to be autoloaded. So open the composer.json. And before we actually do anything, go back to the browser. Let's go back to getcomposer.org. And let's go to the doc documentation. And come on, here we go for the composer.json schema. And here we're going to have a section on autoloading. Let's click on autoload and we will use PSR4 to start with. Now PSR4, under the PSR4 key, you define a mapping from namespaces to paths rel relative uh, to the package root. When autoloading a class like full bus bus, a namespace prefix full pointing to a directory source means that the autoloader will look for the file named source bus bus which is what we did before with our own custom autoloader and if we scroll down you'll see what we need to have within our uh, composer.json we need to add autoload section with psr4 and then declare which namespace points to which directory so let's go back to the editor and quickly have a look at this within our composer.json we only put set of curly brackets and one thing to remember within compo within the json files we can only use double quotes we don't use single quotes so we're going to start with the auto load colon and set of curly brackets then psr4 and colon and set of curly brackets and we said that we want to use app namespace to point to our source directory so we are going to start with app and two backslashes then colon where do we want to point uh, this app namespace to the source directory so src forward slash so now every time that we call in the app namespace uh, and anything that can go deeper from within the app space namespace is going to go to the source directory and whatever we have after that so now if we call for instance app basket uh, class it's going to go source directory and then get us uh, the basket.php file and that's how this auto loading is going to work now that we've modified our composer to json we need to back, go back to the terminal and from within the directory where our composer to json is located run the command composer dump hyphen auto load and we want to optimize it so after that space hyphen o and that's going to generate the new auto loaded auto loader basically so if we save everything preview uh, preview it in the browser refresh the page you can see everything still works exactly the same way as before but now rather than using our custom autoloader we're using the autoloader that comes with a composer now let's have a look at this psr4 standard for autoloading if we scroll down uh, overview this psr describes a specification for autoloading classes from file paths it is fully interoperable and can be used in addition to any other autoloading specification, including PSR0, which was uh, the previous version of the uh, PSR uh, autoloader. PSR0 is now uh, deprecated, uh, hence we are using PSR4, which is the latest version of PSR standard. Uh, okay, if we scroll down a little bit, specification. The term class refers to classes, interfaces, traits, and other similar structures. A fully qualified class name has the following form namespace name sub namespace names and it may be multiple this uh, wild card here indicates they might be uh, going deeper and deeper with the sub namespace uh, names and then at the end we have a class name the fully qualified class name must have a top level namespace name also known as a vendor namespace in our case it would be up because up was uh, the first uh, namespace in our namespace structure which indicates the vendor namespace 
Uh, then we have the fully qualified class a name may have one or more sub names uh, namespace names which means that we can have only the up for instance but then we could have as we had uh, formatter as well which was the sub namespace name then we have the fully qualified class name must have a terminating class name uh, which obviously indicates the last item within the namespace uh, which is indicating actually the name of the file and the class that we uh, want to load. Either it's a class, interface, trait, uh, which we will learn about a little bit later on. Uh, underscores have no special meaning in any portion of the fully qualified class name. In the early days of uh, object-oriented PHP, uh, we were using underscores, as I mentioned earlier, to indicate which directory the file resides in. These underscores were then uh, turned into the directory separator and that gave us the path to uh, the actual uh, file uh, with the class. Now, alphabetic characters in the fully qualified class name may be any combination of lowercase and uppercase. Then all class names must be re referenced in a case sensitive fashion. What that means is that if we have class called, say, array formatter, uh, where a, a from the, the array is in capital as well as f from the formatter is in capital, that uh, is how we're going to be using this namespace using exactly the same uh, approach, meaning that the a and f will be capital all other letters lowercase. We always have to use the, uh, the same case as the, the actual class and path name. So if the directory, for instance, is a uh, first la uh, letter in the capital, when we're using the namespace, we have to also have this letter in the capital. Now there's more to read here. Obviously, feel free to go through uh, the entire content of this page, as well as you can see some examples later on. But let's go back to our composer page so that was PSR4 then you can auto load files as well using the outdated the deprecated version of PSR0 if you have any packages uh, that you want to use uh, obviously they might be using this uh, deprecated version of PSR0 for auto loading then you have this option as well you just add this PSR0 uh, you can use PSR0 with PSR4 as well so you can have block for PSR4 and then block for PSR0 to auto load these other resources then next uh, way of auto loading um, our files would be using the class map and a class map allows us to auto load all classes uh, with the files ending with .php and .inc residing within the specific directories that we declare within this array here for the class map entry. So from within the source directory, from within the lib directory, and strictly the file uh, which we want to load as well. So all classes within source and lib plus this something.php file. Then we have files option. If you want to require certain files explicitly on every request, then you can use the files autoloading mechanism. This is useful if your package includes PHP functions that cannot be autoloaded by PHP. So we use the files entry and an array of files that we want to autoload. And let's quickly have a look at this specific one. So if we go back to the uh, editor, I'm going to add uh, this files entry to the autoload section. So after PSR4, uh, closing curly brackets, then comma, starting with files within the, the double quotes colon. And here, rather than actually curly brackets, we're going to use array. And the file I want to uh, autoload will be called helpers.php. It will be directly within the same directory as my composer, the JSON. That's why I don't preceded with any other directory. So within the root of our project, let's create this file. It's going to be a simple PHP file called helpers.php. And I'm going to create a new function here called dd. And input is what this method, this function will take. And within this function, let's put this bracket on the new line. Within this function, I'm simply going to do var dump, put the input in, and then exit so nothing is returned after this so now what i can do obviously before i do anything i need to go back to my terminal and run composer dump auto load optimize so this has regenerated the auto loader file now if we go back to our index.php i'm going to remove everything that i have here and i'm just going to call this function dd and i'm going to put array uh, error 
equals false, for instance. And if we save it, preview it in the browser, uh, back to phpcars.dev, refresh the page, and there we go. That's our function now returning the array using the var dump. If we go back to our editor, let's remove this call to this uh, DD function. Let's remove all these lines. We can remove this helpers file as well because we don't really need it. And let's remove this entry for files here. We only going to keep this PSR for up uh, point to the source directory. Save it. Uh, let's run compose a dump autoload again to regenerate the autoloader file. We can now close the index and move to the next video.